Hey everyone, it's Jasmine back on SellerM's YouTube channel. If you clicked on this video, then you're most likely a complete beginner with the Amazon selling business, and you just wanna learn how to configure your settings. So make sure to stay to the end and make sure to watch all of SellerM's YouTube videos right after this one. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to like it up and subscribe for more. Okay, so this is a mandatory step when you first sign up for SellerM and you are ready to start sourcing. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna see this little toolbar on the lower right-hand corner and you're gonna wanna click that, right? Now, if you don't know how to get your SellerM on Amazon, you have to make sure to download the Google Chrome extension and you have to make sure that you're on Google Chrome. Once you've done that, it should automatically pop up and if not then you can just click the little extensions icon on the top right hand corner so once you have seller amp downloaded and you get to see it on your amazon keep in mind you do also have access to a mobile app install which is basically if you're doing retail arbitrage and you want the app on your phone and any settings that you configure on the computer it's going to be updated on your phone as well so vice versa you can do this you can update your settings on the phone and then it, once you're on the extension on your computer it'll be the same exact settings um, also as well with all of these settings there's no like save button it automatically saves so just something to note um yeah let's get straight into it so first things first we're going to scroll down and now when you're doing fba you have to make sure to include the shipping charges or an estimate of your shipping charges so if you don't know how to calculate fba shipping basically what you're going to be doing is whenever you are sending out products to amazon that step before you actually confirm shipping charges and continue you want to make sure to do this math so you're going to want to take the total shipment cost divided by the total shipment weight so total shipment cost meaning the in inbound shipping charge and the inbound placement. You're gonna add those two up and the total amount that they're charging you, you're going to divide that by the total amount, the total weight of your shipment. So let's just say you have two boxes and they're a total of 10 pounds each. That's a total of 20 pounds for that shipment. Let's say that you were charged a total of $33 for your total shipment and you have two boxes weighing 10 pounds, which is 20 pounds. So you're gonna divide 33 divided by 20 and that equals $1.65. So that's gonna give you the amount that you're being charged. Now remember, the more you ship out to Amazon in one go, the less they're going to charge you per pound, right? So that's why it's always good to make sure that you have a large amount for your shipment before shipping it out. Usually I recommend to have like a total shipment weight of like over 40 pounds because with this number that I'm going to estimate for you and usually give you is gonna be 160 for the inbound FBA shipping, right? So if we went based off of this calculation, it's 165, which is around the amount of 160, so that's fine. So usually I would recommend for beginners to put 160 into their inbound FBA shipping. Now now remember since we're already including the inbound shipping and the inbound placement charge into that calculation we don't have to be charged for extra placement right because we're already including the inbound placement in the inbound fba shipping charge the 160. so that's why you're going to want to click amazon optimize splits now that's just personally how i do it i know everyone does it differently but if you put amazon optimize splits they're not going to actually charge you for placement um they're not going to Act, they're not gonna have any fee for the inbound placement. Then that's because we're already calculating it in our inbound FBA shipping. Now, if you choose another one, you're gonna see that it's gonna charge you it's going to show a fee for the inbound placement. So that's just how I do it. So that's what I would recommend. 160 and then Amazon optimized splits. Then you're gonna scroll all the way down. With the buying criteria, you usually want 0%, maximum BSR, would be 2%, minimum profit $2, and minimum ROI 25%. It's really just up to your criteria and what you prefer, but that's what usually what I recommend. And also with the inbound FBA shipping, let's just say you do that math constantly for all of your previous shipments, and it seems like you're always being charged less than a dollar, then you can go ahead and start implementing and start changing your seller up inbound FBA shipping to say a dollar. So then whenever you're looking at brand new products, you'll be able to see that you're estimated inbound FBA shipping 
shipping is around a dollar because that's what you're usually charged. And that's how I have mine. I have mine as a dollar now because I'm usually charged around 80 cents, sometimes 65 cents, sometimes 90 cents. So that's why I keep it at a dollar. But for beginners, I do recommend the 160. But if you start shipping out way more things in one go, then you can eventually change your inbound FBA shipping to be a little more accurate to what you're usually charged for shipping, right? So, but for now, just 160 Amazon optimized splits. This is a buying criteria. Now, if you have any additional costs, let's say that you use a prep center, someone who preps for you, then you would have to include their prep on here. So if you aren't doing the prep yourself, you have to make sure to include that. So then you can make sure that you're still profitable within the business and the products. But if you are prepping yourself, if you're shipping to Amazon and you're doing all the labeling and prepping yourself and you don't have to put anything for this. Now, if you have any miscellaneous fees, then you can add it on there. If you have any miscellaneous fees, but percentage wise, you can add it on there. So I know a lot of people, they add on their taxes. So when they're paying their taxes, their sales, tax. Um, if you have a reseller certificate, then you're most likely not going to be paying taxes on the products when you're buying it. So that's why I personally, I leave it alone at zero. But if you do have a, if you don't have a reseller certificate and you most likely all the time pay for taxes, then you should add your percentage there. So like if I was in Florida, I'll just add 7%, but also too, you have to keep in mind, like, let's say you are selling grocery products and the system seller is going to tell you that you're being charged you know tax on this grocery product but you're not actually because it's in your settings so that's why the way that i do it is if i am charged with taxes then i add it into my cost price on the actual dashboard like the the front and center profit calculator i don't add it in the settings but it's up to you right so then we have the default values current 90 day average fbm costs that's really just up to you um i don't really do fbm this is mainly for fba focused settings um custom roi calculation 35 percent um these are how i have the miscellaneous the quick info i would say make sure to toggle on the show break even it's not going to be toggled on automatically so you have to turn that on now i feel like it's really important to make sure that in the past 90 days that your break-even price has not been existent in the past 90 days so that's why i um add the break-even into my panel so that i can see it and then when you scroll up you're going to see the SaaS panels so these are obviously up to you customize up to you but these are just how i have mine so just know that you can actually move the panels to what you want to be seeing first what's the main information that you want to see obviously the quick info stays at the top because it's kind of like a summary of the whole product itself so usually quick info is at the top offers usually is all the way down but that's like the second next and most important thing to look at is your competition so that's why i have offers as my second and then i have the little keep a chart here variations the buy box analyst is usually on the top as well um profit calculator the a seller central so then when i'm ready to add it to my inventory i can just click you know so then it can add um ranks and prices alerts keep a now if there are certain panels that you don't use you can always toggle them off and then put it down but if you do use them then you can toggle it on and put it you know based off of like where you think it should go and that's pretty much that if also too if you use google sheets and you can also configure a google sheet and you can just click export and then it'll automatically add that product into that Google Sheet. It's really cool. So I recommend doing that, but these are all the features that I don't use. This is actually a new seller amp account because I have a new account for my VAs, but I do usually have toggled on BQ because they are integrated with them and that's the repricer that I currently use. So usually I have BQ right below the A seller central. So then I can already add in my minimum and my maximum cost, but repricing, um, terminology is is going to confuse a lot of beginners so yeah so that's pretty much how i have my settings um you can play around with it it's really just up to you but like i said the most important things with your settings it's nothing too crazy it's just the most important things is to make sure you're calculating your inbound fba shipping now once you're done with the settings you can just exit it out and then refresh it and then click seller amp or have seller amp pop up again and it'll automatically already be updated and then like i said too on your app it'll already be updated as long as it's the same account so we see here once we go down to the profit calculator profit calculator right here you will see the total fees it's being included you see how i was saying before inbound placement zero dollars it's not that i'm being charged zero dollars for inbound placement it's just 
the way that I do it, I already calculate my placement inside of the inbound shipping, right? Um, but if you were to have it, let's say um, Amazon, oh, partial shipment splits, and then I refresh it, it's going to charge me for that, even though you know I'm already including it myself. So that's why I recommend Amazon Optimized Splits, but I just wanted to show you guys what I mean by that, because that's probably sounded a little confusing. <laughs> so profit calculator right here, total fees. See how it's now charging me for a placement, but I'm already including that placement calculation when I'm doing that math of like the total shipment weight divided by the total shipment cost. So that's why I just have mine as Amazon optimized splits. That's how I do it. And I feel like it's the easiest way to be honest best beginner friendly way to be honest so once you're good with that then all of your panels are going to be set on whatever you like how you like it also to remember like sometimes if you don't want to use a panel for that certain listing you can always click on it and it'll hide it but obviously we need the quick info and the offers but if there's any that you don't really care to look at for this certain specific listing you can always click on it and it'll hide the actual panel so temporarily because if you go on another listing it's going to be on there again so it's really just up to you it's all customized but like i said the main important things is the inbound fba shipping and if you charge any extra cost taxes prep whatever um that's pretty much it with that now if you're watching this video and you haven't even gotten seller amp yet but you are getting ready to start sourcing make sure to go to selleramp.com so then you can try it out for free today and then also too if you're still a beginner and you are just confused on the business then make sure to watch seller Amp's youtube channel there's a lot of helpful tutorials on there if you want to watch some more of my tutorials you can head over to my channel jazzhustles.com but that's pretty much it with this video make sure to follow seller Amp on all their social media platforms also you can follow me at jazz hustles and that's pretty much it thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys on the next one bye